Welcome back everybody, Patrick here. Moving on to the next question. So if vectors a plus b plus c is equal to zero, and the magnitude of vector a is three root three, magnitude of vector b is three, magnitude of c is six, we have to prove that a dot b plus a dot c plus b dot c is equal to negative 36. So first thing to notice is that when we add up vectors a, b, and c, they're going to equal zero, meaning that they're going to be in equilibrium. So what we can do is we can create a triangle. So we can say vector a plus vector b plus vector c is equal to zero, meaning that when you add up the vectors, you're going to end up where you started. So the head of the last vector, in this case c, is at the same point of the tail of the first vector, vector a. All right, so we have these three vectors here in equilibrium. It doesn't necessarily have to be a triangle. In fact, if uh, the two magnitudes, the two smaller magnitudes, equal the larger magnitude, then it would just be across a straight line. But for now, let's just assume that it is a triangle. And then if it ends up being a line, we'll see that in further calculations. Now notice in addition to these vectors being in equilibrium, we're also given the magnitudes of each of these vectors. So magnitude of A, three root three, B is three, C is six. So let's actually write these on the triangle. So this is three root three, uh, B is three, and then C is six. So with all of that information, we have to prove that the sum of these dot products is negative 36. Now what we can do is we can figure out what each of these dot products are separately. So let's start with a dot b. We know that a dot b is the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b times the uh, angle, cos of the angle in between the two vectors. Now, notice we're given the magnitude of A, we're given the magnitude of B, but we're not given the angle in between the two vectors, in between A and B. But notice that with this triangle here, we're given all of the sides of the triangle, 3 root 3, 3, and 6. So what we can do is we can start solving for angles in this triangle. And then from there, we can start figuring out what are the angles in between A and B, or maybe A and C, or B and C. So let's start off by finding out what this angle is. Let's call it alpha. So if I draw this triangle again without all of the vector notation, so we got three root three, we got three, we got six, and we're gonna solve for this angle alpha to begin. Now, notice this is a non-right angle triangle. It might be a right angle triangle, we don't know yet, so what we have to do to solve for this angle here is we got to use the cosine law. So we take the opposite side, so that would be 3 squared equals the sides that are uh, attached to the angle squared as well, so 3 root 3 squared plus 6 squared minus 2 times 3 root 3 times 6 times cos alpha. So we just uh, inputted all this into the cosine law formula and we're solving for this angle alpha. And notice if we're solving for the angle alpha then the side here always has to be the opposite side so it's the 3. And when you solve for that angle alpha so you bring this term and this term over then divide both sides by negative 2 times these terms take the inverse of cos you'll actually get a smooth angle of 30 degrees. So we know this angle here, alpha, is um, 30 degrees. So now we can solve for the other angles. So we can use cosine law. So let's maybe solve for uh, this theta here. Now this theta and this theta are not the same, but uh, let's just focus on this triangle here. Just solve for that angle and then we'll get into finding the dot products, the respective dot products, so to prove that equation over there. So we got sine theta here, 
over 6. We're going to use the sine law now to solve for this theta because we have an angle and its opposite side. So sine theta over 6 is equal to sine 30 over 3. Then when we cross multiply, isolate for that theta, we'll have theta is the sine inverse of 6 sine 30 uh, over 3. And when you do that calculation, you actually end up getting 90 degrees. So this triangle, in fact, is a 90 degree angle triangle. Now, you could have... Um, you could have shown that from the beginning if you use Pythagoras theorem. So if you saw that three root three squared plus three squared, that would actually be 36 and the square root of 36 is six. But it's kind of hard to tell right from the beginning what it's going to be. So I always assume that it's a non right angle triangle until I am proved wrong like in this case. So in this case, this is a right angle triangle. So if this is 30 degrees, this is 90 degrees, what's this angle here going to be? Well, it's going to be 180 minus those. That's going to be 60 degrees. So notice that we can go back to our original triangle and fill out these angles. So this is 30 degrees. This is going to be 90 degrees. And then this here is going to be 60 degrees. And now, since we have those angles, within that triangle that we initially drew with the vectors being in uh, equilibrium, we can figure out what are the respective dot products because we could figure out what's the angle between the vectors going to be. So let's start off with uh, A dot B. We already have it written down. So let's draw vectors A and B again. So we got vector A plus vector B. So this is A and this is B. And then the angle over here, when you're adding them, is 90 degrees, as we saw up there. However, if you remember with the dot product, this theta here represents the angle in between these two vectors when the vectors are what? Tail to tail. So you got to be careful in remembering that. Because notice this angle we solve for here, that's when we're adding the vectors. So they're not tail to tail right now. Right now they're connected head to tail because we're adding them. So what we got to do is we got to shift this angle A uh, or uh, this vector A over. So maybe something like that. So this vector a is the same as this one. We just shifted it over, but now notice that A and B are tail to tail. And now we can figure out what this angle is here. So it's going to be 180 minus 90. So in this case, it's actually the same. So there's not much of a difference, but you're going to see with these ones, there is going to be a difference. So when A and B are uh, tail to tail, as we drew here, the angle in between them is 90 degrees. So we know the dot product between two perpendicular vectors is zero. And you can tell, so we can actually plug in the magnitude of A, three root three, even though it's kind of irrelevant to do so. Uh, the magnitude of B is three, and then we got cos of 90, the angle in between the vectors when they're tail to tail. Cos of 90 is zero, so we know this is going to be zero. So this part of this equation that we're trying to prove, this a dot b here ends up being zero. Let's move on to a dot c. So we're going to solve this here. a dot c is going to be what? It's going to be the magnitude of a times the magnitude of c times cos theta, where this theta here is the angle in between vectors A and C. So what we can do here is let's draw out vectors A and C. So we got vector C here. That's going this way. And then we got vector A, which is going up this way. Right? That's how A and C are connected in that initial diagram that we made. 
But again, notice that these vectors are connected head to tail because we're sort of adding them, right? We got C plus A. But this angle here represents the angle in between the vectors when they're tail to tail. So what we can do is we could take this vector C and sort of shift it over like that. So this vector, this vector are the same, we just shifted it over. And the angle here was what, 30 degrees? So what's the angle here gonna be? It's gonna be 180 minus 30 degrees because this is just a line. And that is a total angle of 180. 180 minus 30 gives us 150 degrees. So the angle between A and C is actually 150 degrees, not 30 degrees. So that's actually the trick in this question, knowing that when you draw this triangle, you're still going to have to shift vectors in order to calculate the true angle in between them when they are tail to tail, right? So the angle between A and C is 150 degrees, not 30. So plugging in everything into the formula, magnitude of A is uh, 3 root 3, magnitude of C is 6, and then we got cos of 150. Cos of 150 is actually a uh, special angle. So 150 is here. Reference angle is 30. So this would be negative root 3. This would be positive 1. This would be 2. So cos of 150 is actually negative root 3 over 2. So we got 3 root 3 times 6 times negative root 3 over 2. So multiplying all of this out, we don't actually really need a calculator. So uh, 6 divided by 2 is 3. Root 3 times root 3 is 3. So 3 times 3, 9. 27, negative. So this is actually negative 27 when you uh, multiply all this up. You, you can actually just plug this into your calculator. You'll see you end up getting negative 27. So we know this portion is uh, negative 27, a dot c. So let's actually erase all of this to give myself some more room to calculate b dot c, but we'll say we'll keep this here, a dot c is negative 27. And then finally, we got to calculate b dot c. So b dot c, we know it's going to be the magnitude of b times the magnitude of c, times cos theta, where that theta is the angle in between vectors b and c, where vectors b and c are connected tail to tail. So we know the magnitude of b is 3, magnitude of c is 6, and now we got to figure out what's the angle in between b and c. So let's draw out the vectors from this triangle. So what do we have here? We got uh, vector b sort of going downwards plus vector c which is going across and we know the angle here in this triangle is 60 degrees but again uh, vectors b and c are not tail to tail here and we need the angle when they are tail to tail so what we can do in this case is um, we can uh, what shift this uh, vector b down just sort of like that so this is vector b here so this vector this vector are the same and now notice that uh, we got vector b and vector c tail to tail so what's this angle in between them going to be when they're tail to tail well this is 60 this whole thing is 180, so that means this has to be 120 degrees. So the angle in between vectors B and C when they're tail to tail, 120. So this would be cos of 120. Notice we're dealing with only special angles here, so we don't actually really need a calculator for any of this. So uh, 120 degrees is going to be here. So if this is 120, reference angle is going to be 60, uh, negative 1, root 3, 2, like that. It's a special triangle. 
cos is adjacent over hypotenuse, so cos of 120 is negative 1 half. So we got 3 times 6 times negative 1 half, that would give us negative 9. So that is the dot product between B and C. So the dot product between uh, A and B, 0. Dot product between A and C, negative 27. Dot product between B and C, negative 9. 0 plus negative 27 plus negative 9 gives us negative 36. So because these sum up to negative 36, we prove the statement that we were trying to prove. So when you get a question like this, vectors are in equilibrium. First thing you want to do is you want to draw a triangle with them in equilibrium label the magnitudes, then start solving for the angles. But remember, those angles that you solve, those aren't the angles that you plug into the dot product because over here in this triangle, the vectors are added head to tail, and that angle there represents the angle between vectors when they're tail to tail. So you're going to have to be shifting vectors like we did in order to calculate those angles in between them when they are tail to tail. And then once you get those angles, plug them in there, and then uh, whatever you're proving, you should get the correct answer.